How would you explain the current state of the world to a visiting angelic messenger sent from God to glean advanced information from his people, his church? What if God chose you as an ambassador of this world, responsible for hospitality and providing crucial information that would impact the lives of everyone on the planet? Are you equipped to give an account knowing it would affect everyone? Well, that's a question none of us is prepared to answer, nor would we like to be in the position of speaking on behalf of others. To stand as spokesperson of planet Earth before God is too great a burden for anyone. There would be no volunteers rushing forward with hands raised. But before Jesus left the Earth, he told his disciples not to leave Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father, that they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit within days of his departure. This baptism of the Spirit ushered in the Church Age, which biblically falls between the Pentecost and the rapture of the Church. According to Paul's encouraging message to the Thessalonian believers, this period of God's grace over the whole planet will not end until after His Church is lifted from the world and taken to the Lord's presence. Between these epochs are still yet unfulfilled covenantal promises between God and Israel. Until such time, we are sojourners in a world hostile to followers of Jesus Christ. But our Lord has given us a great commission that we are to obey. Wickedness prevails, and darkness appears to be winning. We are living during a time foretold by Jesus as a warning to his disciples. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Our reserves are low and we collectively join as one to lift our prayers to God to ask that by His Spirit, He will pour down fresh fire as He did on that day of Pentecost. In order for the gospel of Jesus to continue to advance, we need the Holy Spirit's powerful thrust to strengthen our resolve to stay the course and shout to the world, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. Your salvation comes from Jesus alone. It's time to ask the Lord to revive our hearts and send us fresh fire. Lord Jesus, I come to you on behalf of my scattered family. It's been a long time since we shared a meal or talked. I can't pinpoint when all this started, but none of my siblings would disagree on this single point. We drifted apart after our parents died. Many favorite memories come from dinner table conversations about day-to-day -day things in the family. We all listened and didn't interrupt the one speaking. We enjoyed hearing their account of the day. Another favorite thing we did together was pray as a family every week on Tuesday evenings. Our father always led the prayer and mom joined with him. I used to sneak a peek at everyone around me. With eyes closed, they looked focused as they listened to the prayers. We all believed then because our parents did. They modeled their faith, and we followed their lead. 
Now that they're gone, the tradition of praying together stopped and we went about our separate lives. What happened? Did we forget what our parents taught? Or did we simply forego faith because we were chasing after the cares and worries of the world? Were they the glue that kept us together? Or is that an excuse I use to explain away my responsibility to restore a once favored family tradition and memory? The truth is, Lord, we tried to come together as a family, but we were never constant. Inevitably, one of us would have an excuse to miss the prayer or a sudden obligation would prevent someone's attendance. I gave up and was relieved to have it end because I felt their retreat. Even when they insisted on how important coming together for one another to pray for the family meant to them. But action speaks louder than mere words. I took responsibility for me and turned all my thoughts to you, Lord. Please forgive us our fickle hearts. How can I inspire my siblings to come together and pray for our family if our lives don't reflect what we purport to believe. Repentance is the first step to restoration. Revive our hearts, Lord. Send us your spirit. Second Chronicles 7, verses 14 and 15. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Isaiah 57, verse 15. For this is what the High and Exalted One says, He who lives forever, whose name is Holy. I live in a high and holy place, but also with the One who is contrite and lowly in spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Habakkuk 3, verse 2. I have heard all about you, Lord. I am filled with awe by your amazing works. In this time of our deep need, help us again as you did in years gone by. And in your anger, remember your mercy.
Joel 2, verses 28 through 32. And afterward, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my Spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Second Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Why do I feel so wretched, Lord? I asked you to forgive me so many times, and yet I go out and do the same things all over again. It's not that I don't believe you, Lord. I do. I'm weak in my ability to overcome my sinful nature. There have been days when I feel it coming on, and I pray and somehow resist. Then suddenly... I get worn down and give in to my wickedness. Paul's words in Romans 7 verses 14 through 25 best describe my situation. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, But the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Knowing this, Jesus, I must submit myself, wretch that I am, to your holy keeping, with a humble and contrite heart, 
I repent my willful disobedience, which gives rise to sinful deeds and later regret. Examine me, Lord, and send your Spirit to provide me with new strength. Keep my sinful impulses in check and revive me, please, Lord. James 4, verses 7 and 8. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Psalm 85, verse 6. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Psalm 71, verse 20. You who have shown me many troubles and distresses will revive me again and will bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Hosea 6, verses 1 through 6. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, that he may heal us. He has struck us down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His going out is sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. 
for I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Ephesians 5, verses 11 through 16. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Psalm 80, verses 18 and 19. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us, and we will call on your name. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Thank you for second chances, Lord. You really came through and saved me. It's hard to admit failure, but when reality keeps kicking, I know it's time to surrender to the fact that I was willful and obstinate. I remember that dark phase of my rebellious life as if it were yesterday. My friends and family told me I was making wrong choices by surrounding myself with people, encouraging my bad behavior. I didn't want to listen to them because I enjoyed the notoriety and attention I craved. But as soon as things started going south and someone needed to be blamed for the trouble, all the fingers pointed my way. Everyone I thought was my friend turned on me and slithered to their corners. I was exposed to the consequences of my foolishness. I deserved it, Lord, I know. So I had another choice as I sat in my cell that day, reading something from the Bible my mother gave me to study. The words on the page appeared to rise and become slightly more prominent as I read and reread the invitation from Jesus. It felt as if he was speaking to me directly. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. 
But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? Not one to ignore a challenge, especially when the words on the page appeared to move supernaturally. I spoke into the darkness. I will follow you if you will save me. I don't know if I'm worthy of your redemption. And then suddenly, this feeling of warmth and comfort enveloped me as if my mother was hugging me. I knew at that moment you were with me. Your presence in my cell that night, when I felt alone and lost, made the difference and changed the direction of the rest of my life. No longer did I feel as if I had no purpose. Your spirit revived me. Acts 3, verses 19 and 20. Repent, then, and turn back, so that your sins may be wiped away, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that He may send Jesus the Christ, who has been appointed for you. Psalm 119, verse 88. Revive me according to your faithfulness, so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. Psalm 143, verse 11. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. Jeremiah 33, verse 6. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security.
Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Joel 2, verse 13. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me from the pit. Your Spirit has awakened my dead heart, making me a new creation. Two weeks ago, I ran into a woman who had attended high school with me. I recognized her, but she didn't know me at all. I understood her confusion because I no longer looked like I did when we went to school. I was one of those girls who enjoyed the fringe and called myself goth, and I lived and dressed like this subculture. My heart was dead inside, and I wanted to look like I felt. Moreover, I was attracted to darkness and soon began practicing witchcraft, primarily spellcasting, to use against those I perceived as my enemies. Because my heart was hard, I didn't care that your word says, let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, practices divination or conjury, interprets omens, practices sorcery, casts spells, consults a medium or spiritist, or inquires of the dead. I was devoid of love for anyone, but instead, felt a malevolence surrounding me, causing me to treat others as if they too were deserving of death. I was lost and in desperate need of a savior. Until the day you plucked me from the grave of my existence. I was in the middle of meditating and you spoke to me in the darkness and your spirit filled me with light. I didn't expect that sudden burst of light. For the first time in my life, I spoke your name. A tiny ember was lit inside me, causing me to destroy and throw away my spell books, crystals, candles, and all the things I used in the craft. Then I began talking to you, though I knew very little about you. Every night since you spoke my name, I'd been reading your word. So much has changed for me, Jesus. I'm a completely different person. That's why my schoolmate didn't recognize me. Now, I dress and look like someone who's alive with light. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me.
Psalm 30, verses 11 and 12. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Isaiah 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Romans 8, verse 11. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Ezekiel 37, verses 4 through 6. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Ephesians 3, verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever.
Psalm 119, verse 25. My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. Dear Lord Jesus, we, your people, have sinned greatly. Please forgive us, Lord. You told us to be holy as you are holy, but we choose to do what we want, how we want, and when we want it. We plunge headfirst into sinful acts against one another, while at the same time making excuses for our behavior or blaming someone or something for our misdeeds. And then, when our choices catch up to us, we cry out to you and ask why you would allow trouble to befall us without taking responsibility for our choices. This is the cycle of the human condition, Lord. That is, we climb on the wheel of life and cling to the spokes hoping to remain undetected. And then a bump in the road is hit, and the wheel falls off. And once again, our lives are in desperate need of repair. Then we remember your words. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Lord, we also remember that you said, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. If someone who is righteous disobeys, that person's former righteousness will count for nothing. And if someone who is wicked repents, that person's former wickedness will not bring condemnation. The righteous person who sins will not be allowed to live even though they were formerly righteous. Lord Jesus, we take your grace for granted and tell ourselves that you will forgive us all, no matter what we do. We lie to ourselves. Lord, we need a revival of the heart and a return to holiness. Help us, Jesus. Revive our hearts, Lord. Daniel 9, verses 3 through 5. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, and prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws.
Isaiah 55, verse 7. Let the wicked man forsake his own way, and the unrighteous man his own thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. Second Corinthians 9, verse 10. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Jeremiah 24, verse 7. I will give them a heart to know that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. Joel 2, verses 23 and 24. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil.
Dear Lord, for years I've been praying for revival in this world and for you to send your spirit powerfully and supernaturally to reawaken your church. We've become lackluster and complacent. Many of us are so caught up in the cares of the world that we never notice those missed opportunities to share Jesus with others. So here I was, sitting alone, hoping you will answer my prayer, when suddenly I became aware of my sinfulness and the presence of unconfessed sin in my heart. And the words of Isaiah came to mind. Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You turned the mirror for me to look at myself and the truth of my faith. You asked, but when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Lord, I know that before you left this world, you promised to return. We are living in the end times until your return. Paul told Timothy, Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared. How can you discern the truth from the lie, Lord? Are we so far gone that we want to be lied to? No, that isn't what I want, Lord. I want to return to righteousness. I pray for your church to reject the lure of the world and repent our waywardness. I pray for a revival of the heart and a return to holiness and piety. Shadows of deceit darken the world and we are easily seduced. Open our eyes by the might of your spirit, Lord. I pray for the dawn of a new day and a renewed spirit within us. Lamentations 5, verses 20 and 21. Why do you continue to forget us? Why have you abandoned us for so long? Restore us, O Lord, and bring us back to you again. Give us back the joys we once had. Romans 13, verses 11 and 12. 
Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Malachi 3, verse 11. I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not destroy the fruits of your land, and the vine in your field will not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of hosts. Psalm 22, verse 27. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 5. If only you would rend the heavens and come down, so that mountains would quake at your presence, as fire kindles the brushwood and causes the water to boil, to make your name known to your enemies, so that the nations will tremble at your presence. When you did awesome works that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled at your presence. From ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do right who remember your ways. Surely you were angry, for we sinned. How can we be saved if we remain in our sins?
Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Precious Lord, hear my prayer and know my heart. There comes a time in everyone's life when we have to stand for what we believe. If it is a decision of faith, our actions before others will demonstrate our level of belief. I used to wonder how I would respond if forced to recant my faith in Jesus Christ. Would I deny you before wicked men to save myself? Because we live in safety and comfort, we're quick to reply that we would never deny Jesus. But the actual test of our faith comes when we're facing potential threats to our lives. Will we have the reserve deep down inside us to tap into when the pressure to recant is before us? What would we say if a loved one is threatened? Would we stand for our faith or give in to fear? Many Christians say, we need a revival and all will be well. What exactly is the revival that we are asking for, Jesus? I believe, and it agrees with your word, that we need to grow in faith and piety. Faith says, Lord, I trust you. I know you're working everything for my good according to your purpose. Fear says, I don't believe you will come through for me. I don't believe you can do all things. Fear is all-consuming. It captures the mind and ensnares the emotions. It is simple. Fear is unbelief. The flame necessary for perseverance under trial is too low. Revival of the Spirit is needed to turn up the flame of faith in the heart. Revival dispels fear and fervency takes its place. God is firmly on His throne in our hearts. He is who we call when we feel weak and because we are revived, we see others and their problems outside our own. Relationships are restored because of revival. The gospel is shared because of revival. Heaven is our future home because of revival. But revival begins with me. Please revive my heart, Lord.
Isaiah 44, verse 3. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. John 3, verse 3. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. First Peter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. First John 5, verses 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. Malachi 1, verse 11. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations, and in every place incense will be offered to my name, and a pure offering. For my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts.
Psalm 86, verses 6 through 15. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayer for the revival of the hearts of your people. And most significantly, that revival begins in my own heart. It's not difficult to identify the pervasive evil surrounding us all, even when we try to deny its existence. To ask for revival is also to humbly admit our sinfulness and desperate need for your saving grace by the power of your Holy Spirit. Revival also means that we take responsibility for our actions and turn from the behaviors that brought about the moral degradation of our souls. Pride prevents us from admitting that we need you, Father, and you don't need us. We were created for your glory and not our own. Sin distorts our hearts and minds and keeps us from fully knowing your glory. Therefore, we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to send a consuming fire to awaken our hearts so that we can once again be the people you commanded for your great commission. Then, and only then, will we see the glory of the Lord coming on the clouds to rapture His church. This world is not our home, as it was before that Pentecost millennia ago, and times following. May it be again that the Helper comes to reignite the church. May this prayer be a sweet aroma and acceptable to you, our Heavenly Father, and to the glory of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, the King of endless glory. Amen.
You can find the list of scriptures used in this module below this video. We invite you to visit us at Let Us Pray on our website at www.carrythelightministries.com. Is there a particular topic you would like to see as a module? We welcome your suggestions for any future videos. If you or someone you know needs a prayer, please email us at let us pray at carrythelightministries.com. Before you leave, take a moment to click the subscribe button and the bell to receive reminders of when our following videos are uploaded. Also, please share this video and spread this prayer for revival. As you know, we hope to carry the light for all to see. May the Word of God richly bless your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is Daphne Collins with Let Us Pray for Carry the Light Ministries. Thank you.